Hey guys, in this video today, we wanna to take a look at the new update of DaVinci Resolve for the iPad. The newest update is now version 19.1.4. Two days ago, they released this one. This is a very minor one. When you come into the App Store, you can always search for DaVinci Resolve on the iPad, and then you see here what is new. When you click on this one, you will see the update history and you can look back and see all the different updates that we got in the past. And the cool thing about DaVinci Resolve on the iPad and the desktop is most of the time, I think it was only one time, but most of the time they release the update at the same time. So when the desktop version comes out, also the iPad version gets an update. Why is this important? Because we can seamlessly work on a desktop and take our projects via the Blackmagic Cloud or via SSD. However you want, you can just take your project and put it onto your iPad and continue working on the iPad. I talk about this all in my DaVinci Resolve Masterclass, all the different methods, how you can seamlessly work on the go in DaVinci Resolve for desktop or the iPad. So today the update is support for Blackmagic RAW SDK 4.5 and support for the Samsung Look Lots, addressed issues decoding some transport stream clips and also addressed issues with the default Default ISO selection for Canon RAW clips and some general performance and stabilization improvement. That is a very minor one. Let's open DaVinci Resolve together because we want to see if DaVinci Resolve still has all of the pages. I expect they still have all of the pages, but let's see this one. Also, this is one of the newer features from one of the last updates. It will always load the last page that you open. So here I was working in the color page. So here my shortcuts for the different pages. I still have them. I can still open the edit page. I can still open fusion page. If you don't know how to open these pages here on my channel, I made a video how to unlock all of the pages for DaVinci Resolve. Definitely check this one out. And the cool thing is now I make this video with my podcast microphone directly connected here to my iPad mini 7. Yes, the iPad mini 7 has no limitations. It runs the A17 Pro chip. That is not even an M chip, but we don't have any limitations. So in my last two videos, I made a video about DaVinci Resolve. I walked you through DaVinci Resolve. So if you're a beginner, definitely check this one out. But it's also interesting to see that we don't have any limitations. So definitely check out this video. And the other video was about Final Cut Pro. When Final Cut Pro for the iPad came out, it also announced that it only runs on M chip models. And that is true until the iPad mini 7 came out and nobody is talking about that. You can run now Final Cut Pro as well here on the iPad mini 7. So definitely check out the other videos that are already made. And if you want to learn more about DaVinci Resolve, off on the iPad. Welcome to this channel. I'm Daniel and here on this channel it's all about DaVinci Resolve and Final Cut Pro for the iPad, now even with the iPad mini 7. And I created a masterclass from beginner to pro where I teach you the bells and whistles, everything about DaVinci Resolve, not just the officially launched two pages. I show you even things that you can do with the iPad that usually only people on the desktop can do because it's the same software. We just need a couple of shortcuts, but when you got this one, that's why I also recommend DaVinci Resolve that you get a keyboard and a mouse because it's capable of it and you can run shortcuts and everything and then you have more access to the software. You can open more of the features and they will make and save your life so much time on the go. DaVinci Resolve is an amazing software. So thanks for sticking around. If you liked this video, hit like, subscribe, ding-a-ding-a-the-bam-bang-gong and we'll see us in the next video. I'm Daniel. Bye.